Lambs made a good job of the first bit. So now to give them a second bit. shutting the cows back here so we can get them bedded and fed safely. Just in my park of gimmers here, so go around all of my yows and counting um, what orange bumps we've got now because we've changed the colour. So yeah, the tops have been in for, I changed the colour on Monday and it's now Thursday and there's 205 tops orange. <laughs> so I think I've got room to leave it another... 20 30 yows for what space I've got in the shed so I'm gonna leave them until tomorrow and then I'm going to change the color to red I think so yeah they've been busy so this is the before Just a way to give her her winter wash and then put her away because we don't really use it that much through the winter because it's not really that much to do with the eggs other than scanning time and a few pre lambing jabs but yep so she's a way to get her clean down i wish it was this easy lovely and clean it's obviously not spotless, but that's just because it's well used. But it scrubs up not too bad. So put this away now for the winter. And it means it'll be lovely and fresh to start again next year. It's when you have to scrape all that silage out with a shovel is when you start questioning why did you make the shed that long <laughs> so that's just the um, start of the pit so it was a wee bit uh, you can see there and it was a wee bit mouldy not mouldy but just not so nice so um taken that away so we're going to start them on their ration today so that'll consist of silage barley and protein pellets and as i've said before we'll just gradually build them up on the barley because obviously these calves have not had anything so we don't want to make them ill um, but they're a lot quieter today so that's good 
get all this cleared out and get them some fresh grub. So we go again. This is what happens every single morning now whilst the cows are inside. They get their fresh bedding and then they get fresh food as well. So the cows at the moment are getting a wee bit of barley as the bulls are back in with the autumn herd. And then in the mix here they're getting silage and straw and minerals. So it is time to do the first ration for the calves. So, um, we use our own homegrown barley, our own silage, and uh, we then buy in protein pellets from Harborough. So Champion 35 Rubitec is the product that we use for them. So we have got our ration made up here. So we're starting off easy as I've mentioned before because obviously the calves have not been on um, any, I don't know if this is going to sit here, any feed before. So we're doing roughly 11 kilos of silage per head. Per day, this is all per day. Uh, so 11 kilos of silage per head per day, just over two and a half kilos of barley, and 1.2 kilos of protein pellets. So we'll gradually build this up over the next couple months, three months, um, and then get them hopefully looking banging for sale day. So just going in here with my silage, if it doesn't all fall off the grate. So I'm doing two days worth here. So we're needing 2,000, about two, three of silage to start with. So let me spin. This is hard to operate one-handed. <laughs> will get fed first so we'll have their mixing over and then we'll just have to add the barley and the cake in the morning and then we'll have the bucket on for giving the cows their barley and also it's because the champion 35 is in the towers so we need to be able to weigh it exactly the right amount because we can't put it back in so put the barley in the bucket go up put the protein on top and then put it all in in a winner um, and like I say, it's because we've got the bucket on anyway and because we need to weigh the pellets um, as well. And because like the tower's not beside the silage pits, we can't just do a wee bit, pour it in, add a wee bit more, that sort of thing. So yeah, there is method to the madness, I promise.
there. So if I let a lot off, it should go to zero. There might be a wee bit left in it actually. So I need to make that up to three, three and three hundred and three fifty kilos. Now, just a way to add the pellets. Pellets are added. So this is the Champion 35 with Rheumatec. If you could smell this, oh my God, it smells so good. So now put this in over the mixer. straw in as well just to give it a bit of roughage but we don't want to put too much straw in because I think I'm right in saying that that's just a filler it doesn't really do much so we're obviously wanting them to keep growing and um, not push them on hard but just keep them growing nicely so yeah got that in over it's roughly 3,000 kilos total and um, so that'll do them for two days hopefully and we shall go put it out to them and see what they think of it. <laughs> them at least. Hopefully they'll enjoy their new ration. So because we have had so many oranges cut in such a short space of time, um, I need to watch out for my numbers for yows coming into the shed at lambing time. So I am changing the colour now to red so hopefully anything that if anything repeats from the first cycle which was green it should show up nicely with red now on top and obviously it's just another new color so just a way to take the first batch in here now and get them changed and have a proper count to see how many oranges there is and we'll take it from there but yeah, so far, it's going well. Come in. So obviously wanting to make sure that we keep the stress to as little as possible because obviously some of them will just have been tucked like two or three days. So we want to try and minimize the risk of them potentially losing. Um, that 
pregnancy. So I was very concerned about doing this obviously because previously we used to just put the tops out for four weeks, leave them to it. You wouldn't know what was tupped and how quickly they were tupping, but you didn't have this constant in and out changing crayons, stressing them out. So yeah, I've always been a bit wary about that, but last year it worked okay. So hopefully this year we'll get the same result. Lie down and bye. Stand, stand. Stand. Come by. Stand. Stand. I don't think there's many in here without a mark on them. Oh dear. Come by. And. I'm going to lose my voice doing this. Stand. I've got a sore throat as it is. Stand. So this is first batch of givers coming in for their colour change. What a lovely day this is. We're getting summer in November now. I'm here for it. If we could get a nice frosty dry winter. Oh, bloody lovely. Stand! Get out! We Stand! Stand. So just try to keep them as nice and calm as possible. That'll do. That'll do. Not wanting to stress them out and push them too hard because, as you can see here, the tops are already protesting with Roxy. That'll do. Leave them alone. That'll do. So yeah, just nice and steady. Let them walk away. It'll be fine. So just had a quick count, I should have taken a video when they were still in the pens, but they are back out to grass now. So just done a quick count, there's 44 greens, 59 oranges, and that leaves eight in that batch of 111, I've got the hiccups now, 111 that aren't tapped. So we're still in week two, and there's only eight in this batch not tapped. So yeah, really pleased with that. Let's go get the next lot, excuse me, next lot of gimmers in and see how they compare. They were literally just split in the pen, so there shouldn't be a huge difference, but time will, time will tell. So this is the other half of the gimmers. Um, there is a few more in this batch unmarked. So I think there's maybe nearer 20, I don't think there was 20, but nearer 20, um, not marked. So it's just, the way it's gone but you can still see there's majority of them there are marked which is really positive for it just being the second week back they go so again just wanting to give them their time and let them work away themselves tops as you can see are all at the back <laughs> but not really pleased with how the gimmers are doing so far now for time for the ewes so just a way to gather them in and swap the colours of the tops and I'm going to give them a shift to the next door field as well. So, we'll get a good count here and we'll see how he's left the top. Lie down. So there's over 200 yows in this group and as you can see they seem to be in good form which is good to see. Now to find the tops and change the colours. <coughs> Until they start doing that. Right, well, I'm having to head off because I have bloody forgotten uh, that I can't count. And when I got more harnesses, I also stupidly didn't think that I would then need more crayons. So the earlies have used a lot of the reds and the blues. So I'm going to go and nip down and get some more 
red crayons so I can change the final batch of yows because I only have three good ones and two dumb ones and I think I'll need at least 11 or 12. So yeah, I'm going to go head off and get them now before it's dark and before the shop shuts. Right, Rox and I are just back, secured the crayons, so got a new batch of red ones. So that's them, you get 10 in a pack. So I took a whole box because quite frankly I cannot count. <laughs> Oh man, it turned into an absolute disaster. This, if you don't know, is a Prattly pin and the inside that's meant to be attached to the gate. It was all going so well, they were just walking along the fence, just Bonnie, I had Roxy on the bike to not push them and flatten the gates and well, something happened. I don't know if they got spooked or something, we're right at the roadside, but Nightmare. I now owe, owe Davy a few hinges, a few gates probably. It's never plain sailing. Anyway, in better news, I have apologised to Davy. He knows all about it. Um, so he's been able to laugh about it. So that's <laughs> oh. What a disaster. Anyway, uh, in better news, we have finished autumn calving and I was straight to putting those alarms off. So thankfully, looking forward to a full night's sleep. Last calf's been born. I can now say it's been a very successful calving. Um, we've had lots of lovely, healthy calves born. Um, not all plain sailing, as I've shared, but that's the joys. But they're healthy, they're happy, they're thriving. So that's the main thing. So yeah, cycle never stops. Bulls are back in, as I've mentioned as well. Um, hope you enjoyed this one about the ration also and a wee update on how Tupping's been going too. So as always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you have enjoyed it and we shall see you for the next one.